Well, I'm really excited to be here tonight, mostly because I get to speak about locomotor art, and I love doing that. <clears throat> I like to talk about experiential and socially engaged art, so I'll do so in the context of my work. Currently, we're artists in residence at the uh, Aberthau Mansion as part of the Vancouver Park Board Arts, Culture, and Environment Program. Locomotor art is made up of 13 multidisciplinary artists, and I'm managing them. And they're related to my research on the complexities of human technology nature interaction. Starting in 2010, a three year arts based study began on the Big Island of Hawaii in the Amazon rainforest, and here in Vancouver in the woodlands of Stanley Park, and on Kitsilano and Iona Beach. To facilitate this research, I developed an independent power system to enable the artists to create and display electronic art in natural settings. The portable system allows for 1,200 watts of electrical power, clean power, and can be recharged using solar panels. Today, the artists of Locomoto Art focus on a new form of public art that revisions the purpose and typical use of natural urban space. The artists present live soundscape compositions, interactive video installations, and so that people can experience spatial embodiment, and they do so by programming space, and so when the person enters the space, they can trigger the sound and the visuals and create their own collages. They also are involved in digital narrative and storytelling. But the artists also develop hand-based GPS, walk-based sound and visual installations. These works are participatory and collaborative and re-articulate the relationship between the person and their technology. Such devices are no longer for information and communication. They're also a means to extend the perception and experience of an outdoor space. This art walk experience, called GeoPaint here, also explores relationships between time, geography, and distance and it can be played by people from all over the world that have the app anywhere on the planet, and they can work to together to create the landscape drawing. Locomotor Art also produces large-scale outdoor events which revision urban natural space. Locomotor Art at Queen Elizabeth Park is an example of such an event combining nature with technology to reorient urban space. Locomotor Art exhibited 13 digital art artworks in the Lower Rock Quarry one summer evening. Primarily a daytime park, at night the Lower Quarry Garden is closed to the public. Participants enjoyed a rare opportunity to be part of using the park in a non-traditional way during an untraditional time. A city's public realm, their landscapes, streets, parks, and open spaces have since ancient Greece represented shared cultural resources of the city. They are the physical connection that binds it together. The work of Locomoto Art augments a sense of intimacy and belonging in relationship to natural place. By enhancing the artistic aesthetic experience, Berliant reminds us that environmental perceptions originate as, a, as, as aesthetic, aesthetic perceptions and that engaging with an object of art or an environment then can be thought of as an ecological event, as a cultural ecological occurrence. I call this emerging genre digital eco-art. The approach of, of digital eco-art is one that engages spectators with interactive and intimate experience with both nature and technologically mediated artwork. Digital eco-art intervenes and exists between experiences of electronic space and place and physical place and space. Digital eco-art seeks to represent both the human relationship to natural environments and the intense human relationship to technology. It does this by offering positive interchanges across their apparent differences. Digital equal art is small and positioned in natural settings more as an intervention. The artists strive to use all attributes of the contours of the landscape by incorporating the existing aspects such as steep inclines, uneven ground, sand, rocks, and trees. Another attractive aspect is that of existing ecological soundscapes such as falling water, waves, birds, wind, and the trees. All of these attributes contribute to the artist's work in ways indoor gallery settings cannot offer as it is more of a simulation of nature when brought indoors. As in situ works, they offer intimate experiences in reciprocity with the largeness of the existing sensorial realm found in nature. Digital eco art has meaningful implications for contemporary society. Because it represents intimate opportunities to revision underutilized public natural environments, there is great value in the reanimation of underused space. 
Through reconnective associations that reinforce place bonding, the mechanism creates a community of self-presence, a reimagined community, and this translates into a cultural currency. Emily Waugh reminds us that parks and open spaces do not only adapt to forces of change, but also have the power to guide, shape, and curate the evolution of cities as the most effective catalysts for urban transformation. Recycling space is not an incidental process, but rather a deliberate and creative act. It is shaped by a strategic outlook requiring intense understanding of the place and the ability to translate the historic, present, and future. It is, in the rep sorry. it is in the repatriation of the inhabitant with his or her environment that aesthetic engagement becomes the perceptual experience of a cultural ecological process. And I submit that digital eco-art is one such opportunity. I leave you with a quote from Richard Louvre, author of The Nature Principle. And I like it and I hope you do also. The future will belong to the nature smart. Those individuals, families, businesses, and political leaders who develop a deeper understanding of the transformative power of the natural world and who balance the virtual with the real, the more high tech we become, the more nature we need. Thank you very much.